let's face it, food addiction sucks. It's one of those things, the, the temporary delight of eating that cookie, that cupcake, that donut that looks so good, only leads to heartache and despair, leads you down the wrong path of feeling miserable. Is it worth it? Let's talk about food addiction today. Hello my friends, welcome to my channel. We got a great show for you today. Uh, we're gonna talk about food addiction and uh, what I feel are ways that you can break a food addiction. Um, I'm not a doctor by any means, but I have uh, 51 years of life experience and uh, I figured a few things out along the way on my journey. I have been a part-time life coach for about 14 years now. Uh, so I've been exposed to quite a bit of this kind of stuff, but I just want to share with you what I've learned. Like I said, I make the disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I'm just going to share some of my life experience with you and things that I figured out on my own. Hey, I just want to give a quick shout out to a couple of people. Uh, Carnivore Kip, I, you inspired me to make this video today. And thank you for that and keep going on your weight loss brother I appreciate you and all your great content and also for a, a newbie to the YouTube community um, I'm gonna be doing an interview with him tonight and I'm gonna be uh, talking a lot more about him and his story and his success but uh, the carnivore cure this one's for you Todd um, as well and uh, just wanted to give you guys a shout out and uh, know that I care about you brothers and keep plugging away. Thanks a lot. You know, I've lost 85 pounds in seven months um, doing a keto, low carb, carnivore type diet. And uh, it's gone really well for me. I can't complain. And you know, that's why I'm making these videos. I wanna help other people, inspire other people and uh, make a difference in other people's lives. So if you could hit that thumbs up button that would be greatly appreciated and if you could hit that subscribe that would also be greatly appreciated thanks for tuning in today and I appreciate you being here I feel there are four key components to breaking a food addiction and I'm gonna discuss each one of those with you with the first one being um, you know this is not only a weight loss journey but it's every bit is a mental journey as well. And if you're not going on a mental journey while you do this weight loss journey, I have a feeling that you're gonna struggle when you get to, your, to the end. Um, you know, you may lo lose all this weight and then gain it right back because you never dealt with uh, problems or issues from the past, food addictions, those type of things. So you wanna make sure you're, you're mentally doing the right thinking and getting yourself in the right frame of mind so you can change your life going forward and I think this is uh, key. So that's key number one. Just make sure you, you realize this is a mental journey too, uh, not just a weight loss journey. I feel the next key step in breaking a food addiction and probably is the biggest step. Um, you know, understand why food uh, became an addiction for you. Now, this requires you to do some work. Um, you really have to do um, the work on your own, go back, and usually it lies in the past as to why you turned to food. In my case, you know, I talk about f my food addiction was comfort. You know, food was the one thing I could always count on to be my friend. It wouldn't talk back to me, it wouldn't pick on me, it wouldn't tease me, it wouldn't hurt me. Uh, it made me feel good. Um, unfortunately, that was only temporary. In the long term, um, it wasn't a long term friend. Uh, it caused me a lot of problems, heartaches, and issues uh, with my weight. So, you know, you have to, to understand why you turned to food in the first place. Um, and that, that was the reason why I turned to food. Uh, it was my friend. People, people are not, this, not always that nice in this world. They can be mean, they can bully. Um, they can hurt you and uh, sometimes it's just easier to turn to food than to deal with it um, unfortunately that's that's a mistake that I think a lot of us make and why we're in the predicament we're in so you got to keep that in mind um, sorry as I look down here I'm just kind of looking at my notes I want to make sure I don't miss anything but you know understanding why food became an addiction for you you know chances are you have unresolved hurts from the past and you need to visit those not easily done um, you know this is where if you need help with this I highly encourage you to reach out to 
a counselor, a therapist, or a really good life coach. Um, they can help you work through some of this and help give you a better understanding. Now today I'll probably touch the surface a little bit for you, um, but I want you to get to thinking about some of this stuff. Um, you know, the thing is with past hurts, you can't bury them, you can't um, run from them, they're always gonna be there and at some point you need to, to dig them out and address them and look at them and look at them with new eyes and new knowledge. You know, what you, what you knew back then, you uh, today you know a lot more. So maybe back then you didn't know, so you have to be forgiving of yourself and understand that your knowledge today is much broader than what it was back then. So we have to look at those uh, problems with new eyes and understanding, that will help you. Um, you know what I found on my journey, my weight loss journey, and I want to say I found this about 14 years ago when I went on another weight loss journey um, where I lost 80 pounds and uh, was eating about 1,300 calories a day and working out at the Y four times a week. I can't do that anymore. My body won't take it. I'm 51 years old, but what I found on my, jur on my journey is I never forgave the people that hurt me. Um, I always thought I would show them and I didn't show them jack until I forgave them. All the people that hurt me, picked on me, bullied me, were mean to me. I remember their face, I remember what they said. Um, all those things, I did not um, get over that until I forgave them and then boom, I lost 80 pounds. Um, I went through that journey early when I started to, to lose weight 14 years ago. And that's when I kind of figured it out um, that uh, I didn't forgive the people and I credit God with that because uh, you know I was walking at the Y one day and just crying and upset uh, my first week there and you know way overweight not feeling well and I said God why me you know what, what did I do wrong what did I do and I heard him he spoke loud and clear to me that day in my mind in my thoughts and said you never forgave the people who hurt you and he was right I didn't. I was so mad and angry and bitter towards them. Um, like I said, I always thought I'd show them. I didn't show them anything. Uh, not until I forgave them. And then I had to forgive myself. Um, the reason I say that you have to forgive yourself is when people are hurting, they tend to hurt other people un unknowingly. They don't realize it. Um, and I think sometimes when people get hurt, they, they put up a protective barrier because they don't want to get hurt again. Well, in that process, they kind of hurt other people that are around them. Um, and that's why you have to forgive yourself. Because um, chances are you, you are hurting other people just by being the way you were. And, and you have to understand that. Um, and that's why you have to forgive yourself. And, uh, and that's a big deal. So, you know, if you have some past hurts and issues that you haven't dealt with, you need to take a look at those because this is going to be a hang up for you going forward. Now you're asking why did I gain all the weight um, after, you know, I lost all that weight before. You know, I, I kept it off a couple years and then I started helping people and guess what? Other people hurt me again. Uh, it was kind of the same lesson. I had to, it took me a while to forgive the people that hurt me. Um, and finally uh, I did that and guess what? Now again, I'm losing weight. Uh, I've lost 85 pounds in seven months. I've changed my ways. I'm, I'm trying to be more forgiving of people. And that's what you need to do. Uh, be more forgiving of yourself. That's a big deal. The third key I want to talk about is forgive, forgive, forgive. And the reason I say that is, you know, like I said, hurt people hurt people. They hurt other people. The people who hurt you, you have to remember, were hurt by someone else. And you have to look at them with a little more empathy. Now, that doesn't excuse their behavior towards you. But if you understand that that person, that soul, somebody hurt them, maybe they abused them. Well, they took their hurts out on you. Uh, they may not have realized it because they just never dealt with their problems or issues. And that's why it's so important that when we have issues and problems, we need to go back and address those and make it right and understand them and forgive people and forgive ourselves. Um, we haven't walked in anyone else's shoes. We don't know what that person that hurt you, what they faced in their life. We haven't been in their shoes. Maybe they were in a very abusive uh, family or they were abused or they were sexually abused or maybe there's 
just some god awful things happen to them um, and you have to understand that now it doesn't make it right that they hurt you but if you can look at them with new eyes show a little bit more empathy and understanding that ah you know that person hurt me because they were hurting it's easier to let that go and forgive them and move on so it doesn't chain you down and hold you down um, and that happens a lot with people, myself included. Hello, I'm a person too. Um, it's just, you know, part of this stuff on my journey, I kind of figured out and I help others with it. So you want to keep that in mind. So make sure you forgive people. You haven't walked in their shoes. Um, you know, and I know it can be very hard sometimes, but you have to understand that. Look at people with empathy. The number one, fourth key and last key that I'm going to bring to you today, which I feel helps um, on breaking an addiction, um, is uh, I try it now that I look, when I look at junk food, the good food, that I shouldn't say good food, it's lousy food, but the stuff that looks appealing, you know, you're, you're at a party, you see the cookies, you see the cupcakes, you see the donuts, that stuff, the candy, it all looks, oh yeah, it brings you right back to your past and when you used to dig in and enjoy that stuff. Now, how I avoid that situation is I don't avoid running away from them. I see them, but I think differently. It's called right thinking, and I talk about that in some of my other videos. Um, and I actually will post one or two of them up here for you to look at. Actually, it's over here, I think. Um, but I associate pain with those items, uh, meaning you see that, that good-looking uh, cupcake or piece of cake and you say, you know what, that stuff caused me a ton of pain. It, years of being overweight, and unhealthy, feeling like crap. And then you got to remind yourself, you know what, if you ate that piece of cake today, you would feel like crap. It's not worth it. You know, is that piece of cake worth being thrown out of ketosis for three days? No, it's not. You know, you have to know in your mind that you know what that cake tastes like. You don't need to eat it again. You know what it tastes like. Big deal. Let it go, let it, you know, let the next person enjoy it. That's not, not what you're gonna do because it's gonna take you off your plan. It's gonna cause you hurt and pain. Um, so you have to understand that. Um, you know, those are the four keys for you today. So just to review, one, just make sure you understand this is a mental journey, not just a weight loss journey. Two, understand uh, why food became an addiction in the first place. Make sure you understand that. Three, forgive, forgive, forgive. You have to forgive people you haven't walked in their shoes. Uh, it's unfortunate they hurt you, but you have to forgive them. And you have to forgive yourself uh, for hurting others as well. So keep that in mind. And number four, the fourth key, like I said, associate pain with the junk food and the food that's, not, that's not healthy for you. Because it's caused you a lot of pain. Um, you know, that's where some of the bullying started or some of the teasing or, or you know how you feel crappy about yourself because you look in the mirror and you're overweight and you're not feeling good about yourself so you can associate that pain with those goodies um, and that will help you break that addiction so you know these are just some tips for you like I said I'm not a doctor I'm not uh, telling you what you should do I'm just telling you what worked for me and I wanted to share that with you today and I hope this video helps you you know, reach out to me. My email's in the description below if you have further questions. I do do some life coaching, so, um, you know, I can give you a reference or referral for you. Uh, like I said, if you, you do need help working through some issues, though, I highly recommend that you see a counselor, a therapist, or a really good life coach. Uh, they will make a difference in your life, and they're not going to judge you, and uh, they will help you break through some of those barriers that have been holding you back. So, Hey, I appreciate you watching today. If you could give me a big thumbs up, it'd be greatly appreciated. And if you could smash that subscribe button, it'd be, it'd be awesome. So I appreciate you, friends. Take care. God bless. We'll talk again soon. See you soon. Bye.